Rio de Janeiro. They call him the Little Angel, affectionately known as Jack. He is a Team Flinch member, the first international player to ever win on the ADP. Say hello, Eduardo Basile. Chicago, can I get a reaction? Here they come, ladies and gentlemen. You know them, ladies and gentlemen, the number one team on tour. Five out of six finals. The number one ranked player from Santa Barbara, California. His whole family is in attendance. He is the Southpaw. He's known by just one name, Dax Hodrin. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The 1998 King of the Beach. The 2000 gold medalist for you, the United States of America. Out of Manhattan Beach, California. Say hello to E. Fanoi. today in Chicago. Blue skies, perfect weather, a capacity crowd jammed in here at North Avenue Beach, the Nissan US Championships presented by Xbox. I'm Chris Marlowe, working today with silver medalist Mike Dodd, Rachel Perry patrolling the sidelines. We are ready to go. Here now are the keys to the match brought to you by Michelob Light. The great taste of Michelob Light makes any occasion seem special. And Chris, for Fenoy Holder, and they're gonna keep the pressure on Eugenio. And for Eugenio, Fred, Watch for Eugenio to be setting Fred constantly on two to take the pressure off of himself. A side note, you've got to keep an eye on how Holdren and Fanoi handle the huge block of Fred. These two teams have played twice this year on the AVP Tour. Fanoi Moana in the red hat and his partner Dax Holdren have on, won them both. So it's the Americans, Holdren and Fanoi Moana against the Brazilians and Gino and Fred. It is the best two out of three game championship final. First two games are to 21. Third game, if necessary, to 15. It is rally scoring or point for play. And Gino to serve first. He spins a lollipop right at Eric Fenoy Moana, who crunches it. And that's one of the keys for Eric Fenoy Moana. He says, you don't try to hit high against Fred. You hit low and tight, and to coin a phrase of yours, Chris, sizzle the pits, and they're gonna be hitting low, trying to beat Fred's block every play. Dax Holdren, at 29 years old, the number one rated player on the AVP Tour serving, and, and Gino touches it down the line. Now let's explain the names for the Brazilians. Each Brazilian has two, three, or four names, but they only use two in written form. And through, but, but they also have a nickname, and Anginho's given name, Eduardo Basil Anginho. And the man at the net, his given name is oh, yes, Frederico de Souza, but he's known all over the world as Fred. And not only Fred, but Big Fred. Big Fred, especially on the AVP Tour. Fred has been roofing all weekend long. You saw him right there just getting up to the net and getting big, and he'll be doing that all day. Here comes Eric Fenoy Moana. And Eric rolls one into the court. Now, if you follow beach volleyball, you know that Eric is a 2,000 gold medalist. He won the gold by defeating Brazilians Ricardo and Zamarco, some different Brazilians, along with partner Dane Blen. Eric is 33 years old, nine career wins, tied with Bob Clem and Steve Obradovich, the nasty one on the all-time list. Eugenio, right to Eric. 
Nicknamed the body. And the body smokes one, and then Gino rigs it up 50 feet. 2-2, two -two, game one. Fanola. And he taps it down the line. Now, Big Fred is an intimidating blocker, but he's not much in the defense department. That's one of his weakest plays, is dropping off the net and playing defense. I think his partner, Eugenio, would just prefer, regardless of where the set is, Fred, just stay up there and stay big. And Gino, the smaller of the two Brazilians, Fred, the taller of the two, six seven and six feet. And Gino gets all the serves, and sometimes he gets bad sets like that. Dax on attack. Dax Holdren, tip, and Gino's got it. He's great on defense, and he can't quite traverse the net. So it's a point for Fanoi Moana and Holdren. And Chris, we can see the strategy already. Dax Holdren and Fanoi both dropping off the net on Eugenio. Fred setting him well off, and this time with the great defense, Eugenio just can't tough that shot over the net. Another point for Fanoi Holdren. Fanoi and Holdren have won two tournaments this year on the ABP Tour, could make it three today. Fred going on two, Fanoi has it. Fanoi on the right, Fred blocks it. Dax against Fred. And Gino with a nice dig. Can he put it away? Not yet. Fanoi Moana. Big Fred, first spiking attempt, look out below. A little thunder. Game one, Brazil and the United States. Benoit Moana and Holdren lead it 4-3. The Nissan U.S. Championships of Beach Volleyball presented by Xbox, brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. Nissan offers a full line of award-winning vehicles. By Xbox, the future of video games has arrived. Check it out at xbox.com. By Michelob Light, the great taste of Michelob Light makes any occasion seem special. And by the pure power of Arm and Hammer. Hi, everybody, and welcome along with Mike Dodd. I'm Chris Marlowe. We're in Chicago. Yes, we are. You know, there's no better rivalry in all of volleyball than Brazil against the United States, two countries that hate each other very much, and it all started way back when. Chris, it started in 1984 in the Los Angeles Olympics. You were there, U.S. beating Brazil in the final indoor volleyball on the beach. It's always been a rivalry. Sinjin Smith, Tim Hovland, all the greatest going to Brazil, winning those games. And that just continues. USA winning medals in both two Olympics in Atlanta and in Sydney. Brazil coming away empty handed. This is a good chance for Eugenio and Fred to take a US championship back to Brazil. And Eugenio with the serve. It's 4 3 here in game one. Benoit Moana tips right over the top of Fred and down for a point. And that ball went down for Fanoi Moana, but that's playing into the hands of Eugenio and Fred. Eugenio loves to get Fred up there big causing loopy little shots over the top. He's going to run them down and chase them all day long. Eugenio's got to be quick defensively. Dax Holdren serving, and he rips the ace right down the middle. And Dax Holdren even admitted that in Manhattan. He says, I'm a streaky server and a streaky blocker, and sometimes I get on a roll. Maybe this is his day for serve a serving roll. Holdren again, his team leading 6-3. Fred with a little tip shot out, and that's really not his game. Big Fred's in there for hitting duties, and suddenly it is seven to three. And Holder and Fanoi said, we've got to come out aggressive, and for Dax Holden right now, he's just ripping the ball, even if it goes to Fred. They're playing good defense. Fred's passing off the net. He doesn't have the same kind of shots as his partner, as Eugenio. So Holdren, who grew up in Santa Barbara, California, rips another one, and Eugenio on attack. Fred, one hand. And now Fred's mad, and he gets the touch. The ball was out of bounds, but it got Holdren going out of bounds. And now Anginho, which means Little Angel in Portuguese, he has two career wins. He won the Washington, D.C. indoor tournament in the early 90s, the first time an international team had ever won a beach volleyball tournament with Jose Loyola. And then last year he won Huntington Beach with Scott Akatubi. Fred serving. 
Lenoir Moana, was that in? That was out. How many blocks does Fred need for the Brazilians to beat him? I think Fred needs to get at least three or four blocks, and more importantly, get big stuff blocks, the kind of blocks that get into the player's head. We're going to have a switch by the referee. They're saying the ball just clipped the side of the line. And this is a problem for Eugenio. You know those Brazilians, their blood runs hot, and they've got to control themselves. They know they're in an adverse situation. It's always them against the rest of the world, and they've got to maintain their composure. Here's Fanoi just clipping the outside part of the line. Away, you know, go. that call is going to go one Fred. way or another. The ball's hit 70, 80 miles an hour. Referees are going to miss them for Brazil. They've got to maintain their composure when the calls go against them. So the call goes to the United States. Game one, 8-4. Fanoi Moana serving. The gold medalist working on Big Fred. And Fred with the knuckle shot over the top. Fred is 30 years old. He was born in Rio de Janeiro. He's in his eighth season, one career win. The 1998 FIVB Challenger title in Switzerland. What kind of a title is that? Kind of a funky one. This would be this would be a legitimate title for Fred. Moana, and it's off Fred. Out of bounds. Eric Benoit Moana, one of the most recognizable players, and he can do a little bit of everything, can he, Mike? And there you see, first sizzling the pits, setting up the defense, and then a couple of little roll shots. Benoit doing it all right now. Nine five, our score. And Holdren serving, and Genio. The Brazilians yet to get warmed up. They played a very tough semifinal match against Mike Lambert and Lee Legrand. That's legal. Big Fred looking for termination, and he smokes one. And again, you see the Brazilians jarring with referee Brent Lee. They just need to calm themselves down. The key to this play is does the dig go outside of the antenna? Fanoi is going to give it a shot either way. He's got to bring it back to the outside of the antenna. And there you see the play continues. Brazilians complaining they've got to settle themselves down, concentrate on just volleyball. So Big Fred set to serve. He does all the blocking for his team. He'll run up and try to take down Fanoi. 9-6. And double contact. Explain double contact or a throw. Double contact or a throw. It's when you do not contact the ball simultaneously. It comes off one hand. Then the other, it's a double hit. The throw calls traditionally in beach volleyball have always been very tight. Now it's much looser international style rules, but that one, uh, no argument there from Dax Holdren. Point for Eugenio and Fred. Both teams drawing at first referee Brent Lee. If you like controversy, you want to see some yelling and screaming at the ref, we have the perfect guy, Brent Lee. He's perfect. He's always good for controversy. That serve out of bounds. That will cost the Brazilians a point. Of course, the Brazilians heavily favored in 2000 when Eric Noy Moana and Dean Blanton pulled the upset. In 1996, a little bit different. Karch Karai can't step as the number one American team. Playing Mike Dodd, my partner, and Mike Whitmarsh, who got the silver, so the Americans dominant. And Benoit Moana will serve Ingenio. And Ingenio has to do more of that. He's got to let Benoit and Holden know that he can spike the ball. Ingenio can go up and pop. And interestingly enough, Ingenio only runs about six foot one. Everyone figured with these new rules, a shorter court, he's going to suffer the most. And uh, conversely, he's come out, learned how to really play this game, sent his big partner Fred up there, and they're wreaking havoc. 10 8 is our score. And going down the line. Eric Fanoi Moana, his idol growing up was Karch Karai, and he patterned his game after him. And here's you're going to see the patented Fanoi cut across his body. He's going to the left, inside of Fred's block, and that's going to frustrate Fred. The harder Fanoi hits by him, the more frustrated Fred will get. Holdren with the serve. I got you! And the husband and wife play rears its ugly head. The husband and wife play of no communication. And Chris, I, that might be the first husband and wife play I've ever seen on the defensive end. Usually it's in serve receive. This time Fanoi with a great drop off the net. Dax reading the play defensively. That's just a huge break for the Brazilians. Brazilians get a break on the hubby wife. They go right back to Fanoi. That sets tight. And shoving it through is Fanoi. Now you're not allowed to open hands. And the Brazilians get the worst of that exchange. Game one, Fanoi Moana and Holder leading 12-9. You're watching the ABP on NBC. Back in 
Chicago where the beach is now officially open. Welcome. Well, who is the greatest player of all time? None other than Rachel Perry's guest down on the sand. Rachel. Hey, thanks. I'm down here with the one and only, the great Karch Karai. So you're, uh, you just told me you're 41 and a half now. You've been playing for a long time. You're getting up there. How much longer are you going to keep playing pro volleyball? Hopefully a few more years. When you see events like this here in Chicago, we, I got to keep coming back. Can't miss these. No, you can't. This is a great game today. You've been uh, you've been playing for a long time, like 25 years. Yeah, what? that's why that's why I keep wearing the pink hat to cover all the gray that's underneath here now. So is that the only change that's been going on in the last 25 years? The gray hair. A couple of shoulder surgeries, gray hair, and uh, keep going with the pink hat though. Okay, you've got uh, three Olympic golds under your belt. Are you even thinking about 2004? At the beginning of this year, I had no idea how Brent and I would be playing, so I would have said 100% no way I'm going for Athens. After this year, I guess uh, it's down to 99 or 98% against 1% one, one to 2% for. Well, we're looking forward to it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Back to you guys. I tell you, Rachel, if there was ever a player that scared the Brazilians, that they hated to play. It's Karch Karai. So that's not good news for the country of Brazil. Yeah, Karch may be thinking about coming back. You gotta love the computer. He's come up with two extra percent now that he might go to Brazil. It's gone from 100 no to 98. 12-10 is our score. The Brazilians starting to get a little bit of momentum. Dax has the dig. And Fred has the block. Just like Mike Dodd's partner, Tim Hovland, used to do getting your armpits over the net and, and subduing. And that was vintage Brazil, Aginho on the first play with a great defensive play, and then Fred just reaching over. He's only six foot seven in the book, but he's got arms down to his knees. Canyon Seaman says he plays more like he's seven feet. Fenoy Moana puts it away. So Eric Fenoy Moana gets his ninth kill. A kill is a successful spike to the sand. And so the team of Dax Holdren if you're wondering how Dax Holdren got his name, his mom got it from a novel by Harold Robbins, The Adventurers. There was a character named Diogenes Alexandria Exanis. So they call him Dax. Actually, it's Daxton, he told me. Daxton. And Daxton puts it away. Do you like the name Dax? Daxton is doing what he does best, and that is he's putting pressure on with his serve. That time, Eugenio unable to control the serve, ending up in a free ball and another point scoring opportunity. You have two little girls, but if you have another one, a boy, you got to name him Dax Don. I like cool. that. It's I really like cool. that. And Dax is into the net. That will cost his team a point. Dax's uh, wife, Jan Holdren, is an active player on the AVP Tour, women's circuit, playing pretty well, getting some sevenths and nights, earning some money. It's combined income like the Dodds used to. Nice to have the couples on the road together, make a little income. Never hurts. So Fred will serve game one. Kind of sorting out game one. Fred has two blocks and Gino with a ton of digs. That set his back. And Fred backpedaling. Watch how high Fred gets up if he goes for the hit. And he crushes one. Canyon Seaman, the uh, last uh, couple of weeks ago, the finalist, he told me, that Fred, he's unfair. He's like 6'11". He's 6'11". Mention that on the air. He's 6'11", and he shouldn't be allowed to play. <laughs> it's just illegal. He's too big. And uh, you talk to all the uh, kind of old school players, and it's hard to believe that Canyon Seaman, Eric Fenoy Moana, they're now old school players. They were rookies when I was coming up. But the, the players, the new players internationally and on the AVP, they just keep getting bigger and bigger. The long serve is out. Benoit Moana and Holdren lead it 15-13. Well, it's a three-day event here in Chicago. The Brazilians, uh, they played 16 games and had a tough semifinal and a very tough quarterfinal. Yeah, they played two extra matches than Benoit Moana and Holdren, and you're going to have to keep an eye on them as far as the fatigue factor. The difference is, though, the Brazilians are used to playing in the hot sun. So Benoit Moana and Holdren just 12 games, and they had to go up against Casey Jang and Jennings and Carl Hanko who gave them everything they wanted 21-19, 21-19. This is the sixth stop on the 2002 AVP Tour. The Nissan U.S. Championships presented by Xbox. Chris Marlowe, Mike Dodd, Rachel Perry. Game one, it is 15-14. The United States trying to hold off Brazil. The Brazilians in the final for the first time this year. That's Anginho in the dark hat, the smaller of the two Brazilians. His partner's Big Fred. 
And the two redheads, Eric Fenoy Moana on attack, and Dax Holdren. And Fenoy Moana, they start to pound. Fenoy Moana is 6'3", he's in his 11th season, won his first tournament in Baltimore in 1994 with Scott Akatubi. And Eugenio and Fred have been going exclusively to Fenoy in the early part of this game, and Eric has been answering every time, just ripping balls cross court and down the line. And Gino getting those back sets, that's a tough one. And Gino puts it down. Now, interestingly, and Gino is one of his nicknames. They also call him Jack, and he was given the name Jack by former teammate Tim Hovland, who couldn't say, go, and Gino, go. He couldn't say it fast enough. So he said, I'm going to call you Jack from now on. And just keep Jack. So he go, Jack, 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 Jack. He could say that really quickly. And then they had a, a wonderful relationship, yeah, and everybody think, knows him as Jack now. I think it had a little bit to do with the shining, too. And when Eugenio <laughs> gets out at night, he gets that little look in his eye, kind of like Jack Nicholson. Well, there are two versions of that story. Three service errors for Big Fred. And now Eric Fenoy Moana, who has nine career wins. He's tied with Bob Clem. And as we mentioned, Steve Obradovich. And that serve rolled out of bounds. So a service error this time around cost you a point. 15, Playing the 21 in game one. And then Gino will serve it. And for Fanoy and Holdren, they've got a risk on their serve. They've got a beat jump serve. So if they miss a few, that's fine. Fred, he's just serving a float serve, and he's already missed three. That's just mental errors. That's trouble. Big Fred's got it. And Big Fred Got must here. have touched Got the net. Fred. And Fred shaking his head going, what kind of a call is that? Well, you're not seeing any argument from Fred. And believe me, if he hadn't have touched the net, there'd be a big argument there. His left arm just catches the top of the net. Referee on his, on his job, and uh, you get no argument from the Brazilians. So Dax Holder set to put the ball in play. And he goes with a floater, surprisingly. Knuckle up, and the little angel touches one into the corner. 17-18, take turn. doing it with the knuckle, he can pretty much do it with anything on the court. One of the most versatile players and one of the best defensive players in the world, especially at digging the hard-driven balls. He moves around great on the court and is always picking up the defense. And Gino has six digs already. And some spectacular ones. This really moves well on the court, especially behind that big block of Fred. Eugenio loves it. 18-17. Game one, crucial. I think especially for the Brazilians. Good eye, good eye, good eye. And Fred serves it out again. So Fred, maybe the best blocker in beach volleyball, needs to consult his serving coach. <laughs> It doesn't help to be the best blocker in the beach yeah. when you can't get your serve in and get up and do some blocking. So Fred, probably a little nervous, hasn't been in a lot of finals. Nope. Only been in one, technically. Pretty good smack. Chance for Dax. And Dax puts it away. Dax Holder. MVP's number one ranked player with the drill. And this is just a fantastic play by Dax Holdren. It's so difficult to block Fred on that second set. Dax gets a great soft block and puts the ball away for a huge point. And the first game point for the Americans. This could be it here. Fenoy on the run. Fred's going on two every time. This is something that uh, we've seen in women's volleyball. The late Young's doing a lot, but Fred by far the best on the ABB tour. So, and, that, and that is such a great play for the Brazilians because Eugenio gets every serve. And that, to be able to set Fred on two, it really takes a lot of pressure off of Eugenio, giving him chances to roam and play that great defense that we saw earlier. Second game point. And the Brazilians are going to take a timeout. So the Brazilians up against game point in game one. Fanoi Moana on Holder up 20 to 18. I want to win every tournament. For the upset of the year, Young is stopped. And the undefeated season is over. Holly McPeak, Elaine Youngs, Jenny Jordan, Annette Davis, time permitting the women's final.
We are going to hopefully show you some of that match. We won't give it away, but it was an intriguing one. That is Holly McPeak. And enjoying the final between the Brazilians and the Americans. It will be second game point for the Red Hats. And Chini will serve it. Benoit Moana and Holden can win it right here. Best two out of three games. This could be it here. Dax and Dax smacks it to the sand. That's it. That is game one. The United States team of Eric Benoit Moana and Dax win it 21-18. You're watching the AVP on NBC. More is coming up. The United States wins game one. The Nissan Road Rally continuing here in Chicago. Just part of the action, part of the tendon action, and part of the lifestyle of the AVP. Well, we've told you a lot about the rules and the signals, but uh, we really can't explain it very well. So we hired a gold medalist to give it to you. Here's Eric Fenoy Moana on hand signals. Okay, there's three common hand signals that we do here on the AVP Tour. One is when I'm blocking one, that means I'm blocking line on the hitter and my partner is taking angle. The second is two, which means that I'm blocking angle and my partner is taking the line defensively. And the third one is where I'm blocking ball. I'm blocking the hit and my partner's roaming around and trying to get the shot. Okay, and if your partner gives you like the middle finger, that I guess that means you're not playing very well. That means you're playing no defense. But Chris, it's very simple. It's all about coordinating your defense and making sure that you're not taking the same area of the court at the same time. Block angle, take line, block line, take angle. And if you're watching Fred, I've watched him all weekend. I only see one sign that he puts up for a genio, yeah. and that's the fist. I'm taking the ball every time. Right. So we're set for the start of game two. A lot of pressure on that man, Fred. He blocked and hit well, but he served pathetically. Four service errors, and that was the difference in the game. And, and Chris, four service errors turn into four easy points, four points where Fenoy and Holdren don't have to deal with that block, and Fred's got to keep his serve in, because it's not like he's beating jump serves. He's hitting a little float, just trying to get them into some kind of position so he can block them. The all-time winner here in Chicago, the greatest player ever here in Chicago. Randy Stoklos won five times here in Chicago. My partner, Mike Dodd, his partner, Tim Hovland, won the first three. This tournament started in 1983. And the first play, for Noe Moana hits it over Fred and out. So we said Fred had to have some blocks. He had two in game one. Your uh, analysis? Well, he needs a few more, okay. but he's come out strong, and he's intimidating Fenoy Moan on the first play of the game, so it's not always a stuff block that gets you the point. Yeah, and Angino misses the dip. One of the intriguing things about the Brazilians is that Fred is an outstanding blocker, and when the ball does get by, you could make a case that Angino is the best digger on the AVP Tour, digging the ball out of the sand. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Dax Holdren. And Angino, he's not putting enough steam on that. That's read him well, and that's why Angino doesn't block, and Fred doesn't do it. And Chris, this is all set up from the tough jump serve of Dax Holdren. It gets the ball. Fred set is off the net. Angino can't really put a lot of mustard on it. Fenoy Holdren working their defensive play perfectly. Fenoy taking the angle, Holdren digging line. And Holdren wraps it out of bounds. So Angino, part of the first international team to ever win on the AVP Tour. And, of course, we mentioned that he did that at the Washington, D.C. Indoor Tournament way back when. Of course, the first international player to play on the AVP Tour was a, a Japanese player, and that was Toshi Toyota. Dax. Nice up by Angino. Can he spike on the left? And he spikes it just hard enough to get a point. And that's really Fenoy just unable to control the easy tough shot from Eugenio. And really, you have to take your hats off to Eugenio. He came over in 1993 with Jose Loyola, a great player on the international tour. And they were really the guys with the courage to come leave Brazil, leave everything that was comfortable for them, and set up shop 
and play for the AVP. And I asked Eugenio and Fred, are you going to go play FIVB, try to qualify for the Olympics? He said, we just love the AVP. And Here comes Fenoy Moana. And Fenoy drills it through. Game one, 21-18 to the Americans, Fenoy and Holdren. Game two, we're tied at three. Chris Marlowe, along with Mike Dodd and Rachel Perry, glad you're with us on NBC. When Fenoy hit that first ball out, but you can see he's really coming to the net aggressively, and that's the way he, his best style of volleyball. And Ingenio touching it down. In terms of uh, standing, Carl Hinkle and Casey Jennings were outstanding. They tied for third with LeGrand and Lambert, Todd Rogers, Sean Scott, Canyon Seaman, and Mike Whitmarsh get fifth. Hanneman and Nygaard, Karai and Doble, Karai and Doble, a disappointing seventh. In ninth place, Stein Metzger and Kevin Wong, they're due for a breakup. Scott Akatubby, Dane Blanton get 13th. Good to see Dane Blanton back out on the tour. So some of the other finishers on the tour. This is our championship final, and Eric Fonoy Moana is, no, he hits it off. Big Fred out of bounds. He was roofed with that ball just landing out of bounds. And uh, you're gonna ask Fonoy, I planned that all along, but here you see Fred getting up big and over that ball just landing out of bounds to Holdren off speed one two when I want turns around knuckles it big Fred good spike oh double contact on a man who used to set for the Brazilian national team and he's laughing about it it's all right it's all right but that's going to cost him a point and you're gonna see no argument there from Eugenio this ball's high spinny and wet yeah and that just comes out Tortured. So 5 4. Fenoy and Holdren nursing a one point lead and a one game to none lead. Easy serve. And Fred with the worst play he's made this weekend. He tried to turn it. A little indecision on Fred whether he should bump that set it or hit it and Chris this set on two has been working all weekend for Fred and Eugenio and I think they're trying to force it a little too much right now they need to do a little pass set and hit and right now Fred's going off one leg yeah. trying to slop the ball around and he's really a power player if it's an easy easy serve set him on to otherwise try to get him a little bit of a rhythm right now Brazil completely out of their rhythm the Americans against the Brazilians. The rivalry continued. That was a great hit by Angino, but he blocked it. Look out below. There's Fred. Also known as Frederico de Souza gets the kill. Frederico getting big at the net, but Dax Holdren is just playing great defense. That's just unbelievable control. Fenoy unable to keep it on their side. Dax digs in for another, unable to control Fred's heat. 6 5 our score. Fred, easy serve. Off speed, and Gino's there to tie it up at six. And then Gino's having it down the line, and you can feel the momentum changing a little bit here. The Brazilian's very methodical, but that's just that game. And that's a big key for Gino right there. He's had four or five great digs, but he's been unable to convert. Conversion means putting the ball away after you dig it for the point. This time, Gino, a little cuff down the line. That's going to get his confidence going. 6-6, six, six, game two. Back on Fenoy Moana. And Fenoy chopping inside. You know, Fenoy has a charitable foundation that he started called the Digs for Kids. And it's really a great foundation. Brings kids down to the beach, teaches them how to play volleyball. And, and uh, he's really doing a lot to contribute to the sport of volleyball. Taking that gold medal and working with it every way he can with the community. And then hats off to Eric. And Gino with the touch shot. Nicely done. A reminder coming up next on NBC, it's the full match play final, the prestigious and grueling U.S. Amateur Championship, who will earn the right to walk in the footsteps of past champions Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas, and of course Tiger Woods. That's the championship match, the 102nd U.S. Amateur Championship next on NBC. That's always a great event. 102 years of playing a tournament. And in terms of beach volleyball, you can't even fathom that. We've been around for maybe 15 playing professionally, and here the golf's at 102. Game two has had uh, six ties and three lead changes. So we're back to the action. Fenoy Moana rejected by Fred. 
And Chris, that time, Fanoi going to the well one time too many. Yeah. He's been cutting that shot down the line on Fred, just hitting it inside of his block. This time, Fred takes that extra step, gets that right hand over, and seals the line. The Brazilians back on top by one, eight, seven. And See where Fanoi goes. Out, out, out. Trying to get it over Fred, and Fred can't get there. Brazil has such a wealth of outstanding players in its country. Where would you rate Fred among the pantheon of all the Brazilians that are playing all over the world? Well, you know, amazingly enough, last year in Brazil during our winter, their summer, they have their own version of the king of the beach. You've got Loyola, yep. Emmanuel, Zamarco, Ricardo, the Ara. great beach players. Yeah. Who won it? Fred. He was the king of the beach in Brazil last year. Oh, good case. Could be made for Big Fred. That's a pretty good Come set there. On, and Gino right to Dax. Dax guessed right. Look out. They suck hey! at it. And oh, Big Fred did it. Violation. And that's a break for Fenoy Moran and Holgren during that rally. Eric oversetting. Fred just unable to control. Gets his hand caught in the net. So another lead change. Going to get a good shot of it right there. Fred's just forearm on top of the net. Big break for Fenoy Moran and Holgren. He's been leading 9-8. And Fred is stuck. And Fenoy yeah. glaring at Brent Lee for some reason. The official shaking his head. And he's wanting another throw call on Eugenio. That was a high spinning pass, but that one was controlled well by Eugenio. Shouldn't have been a throw, but Fenoy. Any chance you get as a player, you got a chance to jab that ref and try to get in his head. Maybe you'll get a call later on in the match. Dax Holger and serve into the net. And that makes it 10 to 9. We have 125 teams start out in this tournament, men's and women's. And we are down to two in the men's division. It's a $150,000 event. As we mentioned, Randy Stoklos, the five-time winner, four with St. John Smith. One with Brian Lewis, who is still on the injured list. 10 9. And line, line. You know, a lot of people would ask, why are the Brazilians serving for Norma Juana all the time when he's such a powerful hitter? I think the reason is, is Dax Holden is a lefty and he's so hard to read. He's got one of those funky approaches. He goes up, he hangs for a long time, and really sees the block and the defense well. So. Go to Fenoy because Holdren just frustrates the you know what out of all blockers. Talking to Whitmarsh, he hates to block against Dax Holdren. Some of the great lefties, of course, uh, Kirk Kilgore, who recently passed away, Fred Sturm, Steve Obradovich. Here comes Fenoy. Spinning it up. And Big Fred touching it over. And there you see Dax Holdren just slapping his side. Another ball control error. Game two, Fenoy and Holdren lead 11 to 10. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. You're watching the AVP on NBC. Back in Chicago, Jen Holdren is the wife of Dax and a pretty good AVP player herself. She's standing by with Rachel Perry. Rachel? Thanks. You know, Mikey Lambert wrote a song about the AVP and he says, it's a sexy, sexy sport. I would have to agree. Who's the sexiest player out there? It'd have to be my husband Dax with maybe Eric Fenoy coming second close. Ooh, you think his partner's sexy too? Not as sexy as Dax, but he's a close second. <laughs> okay, so you're you're on the tour as well. You play volleyball on the tour, but you're not the only couple on the tour. Why are so many volleyball players going out with each other? Is it the breeding stock? Because you guys are all, you know, really well built. It's the lifestyle. We have a wonderful lifestyle. We're at the beach every day and we have free time and we get to spend a lot of time with each other. Well, that's good. That's good for the relationship. It is. Um, how do you prioritize your life? Because I know you're a pro vo volleyball player. Right. You also do commercials. You do ads for Nike. Um, you're a mother of two. Right. How do I balance it? You know, it, it's all about my husband first and family. We spend a lot of time with our family. And we have a lot of help from our family. So we get everything done. I don't know. It's just a juggling act, I guess. Cool. Well, good luck to your husband out there. And uh, Chris and Mike, back to you. Thank you. All right, Rachel, uh, two kids for Dax and Jen, uh, Ellis and Kobe. And Kobe. I assume that's after Kobe Bryant and not after Kobe Japan. <laughs> Dax. Yes, Dax is sexy, folks. Benoit's got the body, but I guess uh, Dax has the mind. Is having a mind sexy? 
I guess so. Oh, okay. I always thought so. Okay. You you I never had the body. You, you weren't very sexy then. But apparently. I tell you, Dax has the skills, and that's what he's been demonstrating more than anything in this final. He's serving, he's blocking, and he's playing great defense, doing everything you have to do. Game one went to the United States team of Holdren and Fenoy Moana, 21-18. Game two has been much closer back and forth, and now Fenoy Moana and Holdren getting a little momentum with that block there. And Chris, Dax Holdren is so mild-mannered. It, it was almost his Achilles heel. He was too mellow playing. Now he's with a fiery Fenoy Moana, the body, and you see more animation out of Dax, and that's made him a better player. Fred with a nice set, and then Gino cuts the ball inside. Of course, Dax Holdren played for a long, long time with his best friend, Todd Rogers. 12 years they played together. That's an all-time record. And uh, I asked Dax about it in the media tent earlier, how tough a phone call was that. And he said, very, very difficult to drop my pal, but I thought I would have better success with Eric, and they have. 14 to 12, Brazilians trying to hang on here. I haven't really got the feeling that the Brazilians think they can win, and now Fred is going to question first referee Brent Lee and say that was a throw or a chuck. Well, from my eyes up here, I thought that set was fine. It didn't go exactly where Fenoy wanted it to. The set was well off the net, but it wasn't mishandled. It wasn't a double hit. And this is the, the Brazilians getting too involved in everything except the volleyball. That's a bad set. It's off the net, but it's not a mishandled ball. Concentrate on your side out. Don't just jaw at the ref for no good reason. Holden will serve. 15-12. And a beautiful block by the body. Fanoi hitting, blocking, digging, and intimidating the gold medalist going to work, my God. Eric Fanoi Moana, one of the most animated players out there on the tour. He really knows how to bring it in the big tournaments. We saw him win two weeks ago in Manhattan. And he's, he's continuing not only his great play, but inspiration. He just, his body language, he fires up his partner so much. He does all those little things. His reactions really build momentum for his team. And he's just one of those emotional players that really brings it on the court. Brazilians in trouble now, and they really have to shore up their game. What advice would you give Team Brazil right now? Well, they have to concentrate on their game. Fred has to get big at the net. Eugenio has to convert when he has his defensive opportunities, and they just need to settle down. They're only down three points, a couple blocks, a couple good side outs. For points, they're right back in this match. They have been serving for normal one-up relentlessly. And it's not paying off. And Gino with a dig. Big play here. And Gino. Benoit digs back. The gold medalist. And he hits it off the block out of bounds. Point. Benoit Moana and Holdren. And golf, they say sometimes your pars are some of your best scores. And in beach volleyball, if you make a great, great defensive play that keeps the other team from scoring, that can sometimes be the most emotionally uplifting play. And for Fanoi, he made the huge defensive play to save the point for his team. Fanoi Moana serving at 17-13. Fred going on two, and he puts it away. Eric Fanoi Moana, interestingly, has received 27 of the last 29 serves, Mike. I think it's too much. I would try Holdren a little. They're not having that much success with Most it. Most definitely, and, and 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 they not only have been 27 serves, but 27 easy serves yeah. for Eric to control uh, and give Dax a perfect pass. It's just another lollipop serve. You know what happens if you serve too many lollipops, Mike. What's that? You, you get lit. <laughs> you get lit, and that's what's happening right now. To the Brazilians, it's 18 to 14. They need to toughen it up. Not much wind here in the Windy City. So it's a little bit tougher to serve. And now Dax, just three points away from wrapping it up. Off the net is Holdren. And he puts it away. Dax Holdren. Flopping into the sand. And Chris, what makes a great defensive play work? Conversion, getting up after making the play and just delivering this ball right down the middle. And that's what Holdren and Fenoy have been consistently doing this match, converting on their defensive opportunities, scoring points every chance they get. So Holdren and Fenoy Moana closing in on their third win this season. And nobody else, and Eugenio drills it. 
Though it's 1950, and once again, point per play, much tougher to rally in this scoring format than it was in the old side out scoring of the other year. Yeah, the pressure really on Brazil right now. Fred basically has to go back and either try to serve or block for two or three straight points. Otherwise, Holdren and Fanoi Moana can just side themselves out, scoring points on side outs, and finish off this game and the match. Big Fred jumps serve, and he rips it out of bounds. And that is going to be trouble. Let's take a look at today's stat of the match, sponsored by Burger King. Fanoi Moana getting some numbers, getting jiggy with those numbers. 19 big kills, two blocks, nine digs. That's just an all-round game. And Fanoi doing it on the court. He and Dax are so universal in their game. They do everything well, uh, much like Karai and Steffes did in the old days. Timeout on the sand. Fanoi and Holdren closing in. Don't forget, more volleyball coming up. The women are on deck. Stay with us. Dig for Kids, Eric Fanoi Moana's charity, sponsored by Paul Mitchell. They're also a longtime sponsor of the AVP Tour. They give haircuts at every tournament for just 10 bucks. And uh, Mike Dodd, you could use one. Chris, I was going to say, were you in there earlier? Championship point, Chris Marlowe, Mike Dodd, Rachel Perry, men's final. A dominating performance for Eric Fanoi Moana. And Dax Holder, and this could be it. No, oh, his big friend puts it away. So that was the first. Championship point, 20 to 16. There will be four more here now. And this is the big advantage that Fanoi Moore and Holden have now. They're going to have four opportunities to receive serve to win the match. Who will put the final ball down for the United States? Dax Holden will get the chance. Daxton for the win, and he's got it. but he's going to hug a couple of his buddies. <laughs> go to the buddies. Go to the buddies first. And Chris, after so many serves to Fanoi, the Brazilians finally switch it up, but you don't go to Dax Holden at that time in the match. He puts it away. Another huge open win. U.S. champions, Fanoi Moana and Holden. So two huge wins in the span of two weeks. Eric Fanoi Moana and Dax Holden, they win their third tournament together this year and they have established themselves with one tournament to play the Paul Mitchell shootout as the kings of the beach historically it's been the team that wins the most tournaments the kings and Angino still looking like he's unhappy with the officiating but I really don't think Angino and Fred have much to be unhappy about they were just outplayed by Fanoi and Dax. They have no one to blame but themselves. They missed a lot of serves and they just didn't, they just couldn't convert on their point scoring opportunities. That was really the difference. And I was very impressed with how Fanoi, Moana, and Holdren handled the play on two. They got a lot of blocks and soft blocks on Fred, converting that play on two into point scoring opportunities. You see Jen and Dax there. Jen Holdren hugging the sexiest man <laughs> on the AVP tour, and he's a happy one. Dax Holder. Don't forget, the rematch is coming up. Yes. Holly McKeek and Elaine Youngs fuming for two weeks after the disaster at Manhattan. Jordan and Davis trying to do it again. We're going to have a lot of that match for you coming up as the ABP on NBC continues. Now let's take a look at today's risky play of the day, sponsored by Blue Crush. Fanoi Moana and Holdren Mike Dodd, and this is a risky play. There you see Fanoi going over to the other side, bringing it outside of the antenna. A very risky play for their team. It didn't pay off here with Fred putting the ball away, but it set the tone for them defensively throughout the match. A risky play of the day sponsored by Blue Crush. Well, the check presentation. Kurt Barsh, the national promotions manager for Nissan North America, presenting the check. And it's a nice fat one for Dax Holdren and Eric Fanoi Moana. 
Courtesy of the AVP. All right, standing by the winners, Dax and Fanoi. They're with Rachel Perry. Rach. Hey, thanks, guys. Eric and Dax, congratulations once again. So good to see you guys here. You know, I was just talking to Karch about this. There's so much depth of talent and skill within the men's teams on the AVP. But now, you know, a couple weeks ago with your win in Manhattan Beach, now you won here. This is your third win this year. It seems that there is a clearly defined number one men's team on the AVP. How did you guys get that? Uh, you know what it is? It's a lot of dedication to the sport. Uh, Dax actually spent a lot of time in the office, even coming down from Santa Barbara. It's like a two hour drive to, San to LA and then back up to Santa Barbara. So that's a lot of dedication by Dax and I really appreciate it. It has paid off big. And uh, thanks to Chicago, the fans are great here. We love it here. <laughs> and it's just nice to be on the victory stand and I'll cherish it as long as I can take it. You guys had to face the same kind of uh, problem here. Uh, Mike Whitmarsh back in Manhattan Beach, he's like, what, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, you know, so is Fred. How do you guys neutralize that height at the net so well? Well, uh, you notice we didn't serve Fred too many balls because <laughs> he can absolutely bring it. Um, but we just seem to move the ball around. We control the ball and side out well enough and score just enough points to squeak by. Well, congratulations, guys. All right, back to you, Chris and Mike. Dax and Fenoy, the champs, here in Chicago. When we return to the Windy City, we'll have coverage of yesterday's exciting women's final. It's a doozy. But first, we'll catch up on the day's sports news with Andrea Joyce, the Sun America Sports Desk in New York. After these messages, you're watching the AVP on NBC.